Good morning, Portland. Just want to take a few minutes of your time. We are ending the month of November and beginning the month of December. And tonight they're going to light up the tree right over there. And for some of us, it's a time of festivity. But for others of us, as you can see in the city, with all the noise and all the stuff that's going on, some people are not too happy with what's going on in our city, in Multnomah County. I, for one, am one of those people. But I can't walk with those people because I don't know who they are who are protesting. And I think everybody turns to protest whenever something goes wrong in our relationship with the city or with the community that's in the city. As a preacher, God has called me to give you the message of eternal life, which is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ so you could be saved from sin. My verse for today is coming from Revelation 20, verses 11 through 15. Revelation 20, verses, uh, verses 11 through 15. Revelation 20 says this, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his work. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. When you go to Revelation 21.8, the scripture says, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This, Portland, Oregon, is the present position of God against sin. This, Portland, Oregon, is the present position of God against sin. We do not want to go back to the old world order. We do not want to go back to the old system. Not when that is the present position of God against sin. Not when that is the future position of God against sin and sinners. We don't want to go back to the old way. You might be asking me, what are you talking about, Kevin? We don't want to, I went online and I looked up some information that I guess our government has put up. We don't want to go back to this way of living. Not when that is the decree of God against sin. I just read you Revelations 21. And Revelation 20. How's it going, bro? Good morning. And Any if gospel? that, yes. And if that <laughs> is the position of God the gospel, in the man? future, praise right. God. Right. If, right. In, praise God. Praise God. And if that is the position right. of God right. against sin, if I was to repent and believe the gospel. If that is the position of God against sin, we don't want to go back. We don't want to go back to living this way. You are opposing me as I'm preaching the gospel. Can I please preach the gospel? Bob Jones University representative. That's my question. What is the gospel, my friend? The gospel I'm preaching is stand there and listen so I can talk to the people. Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago for your sins and actions. We don't want to go back to this old world order. We don't want to go back to slavery. We don't want to go back to the clan mentality. We don't want to go back to the lynching. We don't want to go back to white supremacy. We don't want to go back to this way of living. This is not the way you want to live with the African American world. This is not the way you want to go back to. You don't want to go back to the old world order. You don't want to go back to this way of dealing with man. 
You do not want to go back to this. Not when Revelation 20 and Revelation 21 just gave you a warning of the great white throne judgment and that God is going to cast man into the lake of fire. You don't want to go back to that way of life. You don't want this to be the way you deal with Africans. You don't want to enslave them. You don't want to lynch them. You don't want to burn the cross of Christ. You don't want to claim white pride and white supremacy. Do you understand what I'm saying? I just read you what the scripture says in Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Revelation 21, verse 8. I just looked this up online. What is white supremacy? These are your words, Americans, not my words. These are your photographs, Americans, not my photographs. The definition for white supremacy is white supremacy disorder produces individuals who demonstrate an arrogant and pretentious self, pretentious sense of self-importance and have problems getting along with others who they devalue. It is you as a people thinking you're mightier than others. You're better than others. You see, you don't want to go back to this way of living. You don't want to think this way. Not when the gospel warns, and the warning of the gospel is, the books will be opened, and the great and the small are going to be judged. Who are the great and the small? The leaders of the world, the homeless of the world, the sick of the world, the crippled of the world, the kings of the world, the leaders of the world, even the leaders of the church. You don't want to go back to this way of living. You don't want to go back to this way of dealing with Africans. Why? Because of the judgment that is to come, the future promise of God. If God is promising us that He's going to judge us in the future, if the police department says, if you cross on a red, I'm going to arrest you for whatever, what is it called? When we, when we, when we cross on red lights, or you drive a red light, you don't do it, you stop, right? So our relationships with others have to be within the boundaries of what God desires. What is that future relationship? It shouldn't involve lynching. It shouldn't involve slavery. It shouldn't involve sin. What sin? Raping, homosexuality, fornication, adultery, drug dealing, incest, molesting children, robbing, killing, and all of these evil things that we do against each other in this nation of ours. We need to show respect for one another. We need to show respect for other people's homes and properties and not trespass their homes and insult them in their homes and molest them in their homes and abuse them in their homes and gas them in their homes and rob them in their homes. We mustn't do that. Why? Because of the warning of the scriptures. We mustn't persecute the church, right? We, we shouldn't harass the church, abuse the church, persecute the church, sexually assault the church, destroy the property of the church by setting the church's buildings on fire. What should we do instead? I don't know, maybe we should call the police department. Will that resolve it? No. Maybe we should call 911. Will that resolve it? No. Maybe we should call the known emergency line. Will that resolve it? Absolutely not. What about if we call the White House or the administration or organizing for action? Will that stop the old world order? No, it will not. Should we call then the Senate and the Congress? Absolutely not, because that's not going to stop the old world order. That's not going to stop the, the life of sin. How about if we call, let's see, you know, bring this whole thing to court before judges. Will that stop our old sinful way of living? No, it will not, unfortunately. How about if we call the Independent Police Review and say, hey, these officers are not doing anything on my behalf. These officers are not arresting the people that are trespassing and abusing and doing these things to my property. Will that stop the old world order? Will that stop the old life of sin against the church? No, it will not. How about if we call Pivot or, or Portland rape victim? I mean, I could go through the whole list. How about if we go to the RCW law? For sexual um, 
you know, a suit against these people. It doesn't matter what we do. Just stop. Sin. Sin will not stop until we do one thing and one thing only. And the future judgment of God and the present judgment of God will not stop until we do one thing and one thing only. Repent! Repentance is the only avenue by which we will stop the, for, the, the future eternal judgment of God. The present judgment of God of turning us over to sin. The only thing that's going to stop all of the sins and the evil that is in our world is repentance. We must be a people of repentance. We must be a people of repentance. If we are not a people of repentance, it doesn't matter what group you call, whether from the White House or to the police department, sin will never stop. Sin will never stop. It doesn't matter who you call on. But if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. But if you call on the name of the Lord, then all the sins that are being committed by you are against you. That's the only thing that you can do, is repent, believe, and call on the name of the Lord. How many times does a man have to call 911 to report a crime being committed? How many times does a woman have to call 911 to report a crime being committed against her? My husband is beating me. My husband is taking advantage of me. My husband is doing this to me. My mom is molesting me. My father is abusing me. My father is a drunkard. My mother is a child molester. Who can I call to report these crimes being done against me? As the person committing the crime, the only thing you can do is repent. You do not want to go back to the old world order. You do not want to go back to the place where you can call a black man a nigger or to put a rope around his neck and lynch him. You don't want to go back to the place where white supremacy is being exalted. You don't want to go back to this, people. This is not the world you want. This is the world you want to shun. You want to go back to a peaceful... I mean, you want a world where there is peace, right? You want a world where there is peace. Not war. You don't want another war with Iraq. You don't want another 9-11. You don't want another tower destroyed. You don't want to go to, you know, seven more years of war. That's not what you want. Not at Christmas or any time during the course of the year. And so how do we stop it? We repent of hate. We repent of sin. We repent of immorality. And you're going to say to me, but we can't. It's innate. It's within us. We can't help hating the blacks. We can't help practicing homosexuality. We can't help practicing fornication and adultery. We can't help it. That's who we are. That's why we're the LGBT. That's why we're the Ku Klux Klan. That's why we're those people, because we can't help it. Yes, you can help it. It's called repentance. God would not have put it in the Word if you couldn't do it. Yes, you can help it. Yes, you can change. Yes, you can go in another direction. Yes, you can change your future. The future does not have to be a future judgment against you or your family. You don't have to be called these names. You don't have to practice those things. You can turn to Jesus today and be free by faith. I have a poster up. And the poster is of Jesus Christ being beaten and judged right before he was crucified. And so I challenged one of my teachers by putting up the poster with Isaiah 53, the suffering servant, on it in my apartment. And then underneath it, I wrote his name and a family name, and I said that they're giving it to the Quran, which is me. And do you know that they lived up, they lived up to that poster every single day 
that that poster was up. They came into the apartment and they lived up to it. They went back to the old world order and they lived up to every single word that was on that poster. There wasn't a day that they didn't come in and give it to me. Whether it was, you know, I just had a visit from the police department. They were like, hey, Sutheran, some of your videos are disturbing. And I said, well, I apologize for the disturbance, but I have to address the issue. It's not my fault. This is what they're giving me to deal with. Well, after the conversation, I thought perhaps this would come to an end. That was on the 27th. On the 28th, they lit a fire under me. And on the 29th, all night long, they lit a fire. And I thought, my God, these people don't understand what's coming. They don't understand the future judgment of God. They don't understand the wrath of God upon us today. When you look at our society, you don't see God's wrath. But God's wrath is there in the life that we live as sinners. If you are a sinner and not a saint, that means you're under God's wrath. If you are a sinner and not a saint, that means you have incurred the wrath of God. Anybody who lives as a sinner is unfortunately under God's wrath. Is under the wrath of God. But those who live as saints live under the grace of God. Because if we were not under God's grace, we would not be living as saints. We would be living as sinners. Willfully against the will of God. So before we leave November, I just want to encourage the city. Take heed to God's word and understand the future judgment of God. The great white throne that's waiting for us. It's not the, 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 you know, the death certificate or the person being buried with a tombstone. No, 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 that's not it. It's what happens to the soul and the spirit. Because according to Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed for all men to die, and after this comes judgment. It is an appointment that none of us is going to miss from the great and from the poor, from the rich and from the poor, from the people that are exalted as kings to the people that are homeless in the streets. None of us will miss, miss that day of, of death, and neither will any of us miss the great white throne judgment, which is in the future. And so, to prepare you for all of that, because our Lord went through the process of being judged and being killed and resurrected and ascending up to heaven, we have a future that's coming. And whether you believe my words or not, it is written, and this gospel will continue even after my departure. And this gospel will continue to the generations to come. And this gospel, and this message, and this warning from the Lord will continue. Stop for a second, Americans. Consider what the Word of God is saying. There is a future judgment. Don't go back to the old world order. Come to the new world order, which is what? Under the Lordship of Christ. Under the, 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 the Scriptures of God. All Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for training, for correction and righteousness, that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. That's the new world order you want to follow. One that merits peace, not violence. Love, and not sexual love, but the love of Christ, the love of God, which consumes us which doesn't involve sexual immorality. You don't want to go back to this. This is the old world order. Instead, you want the new world order, which is the Word of God. You, you must exchange this for this. You must exchange the sin of our ancestors for God's promises and God's future judgment. If you don't take it from this message, or from me, or from your previous preachers and leaders, at least take it from God's Word. Give God that much respect. Even if you don't take it from me, at least take it from one that you can trust. That is the Word of God. If God is putting it on your heart to repent, remember I said, the only thing that's going to take the old world order away is repentance and receiving Christ as Lord. By faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. 
All you have to do is pray and say, Lord, forgive me for my sin, for living and thinking the old way. Lord, forgive me for honoring sin and Satan in my heart. I repent of that sin. I honor you as Lord, and I acknowledge you as God. Would you please forgive me, and give me your Holy Spirit, so I may be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. When you pray that prayer by faith, there is absolutely no reason for God not to forgive you. There is no reason, because he died on the cross for our sin. If you read Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53 says, Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of parched ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. This is talking about the Christ, the prophet Isaiah. He was despised and forsaken of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their, their face, he was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely our grief he himself bore and our sorrow he carried. Yet we ourselves esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging we are healed. By his scourging, by his stripes, we are healed. If you believe, you will receive his forgiveness and his Holy Spirit. And you will be healed of your hate. You will be healed in your heart. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. Our sin and our iniquity falls on him. There's no reason for us to doubt. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before us, shearers. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people, to whom the stroke was due. The judgment was due to Israel and to the world, but Christ took it on the cross. His grave was assigned with wicked men, yet he was with a rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. But the Lord was pleased to crush him, putting him to grief. If he would render himself or a guilt offering, he will see his offering, his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see, he will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justly, will justify the many, as he will bear their iniquities. Last verse, therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the booty with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. Let Christ intercede for you, O sinner. Let Christ intercede for you, O unrepentant one. But be repentant so he can forgive you and do not go back to the old world order 
but remember the judgment to come in the future. According to Revelation 21, 8, it's the lake of fire. According to Revelation 20, 11 through 15, it's the great white throne judgment. That awaits for me, and that awaits for you. Let's not go back to the 18, 17, and 1600, but let's move forward to the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd century. Walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, and not under the power of Satan. Amen.